Welcome back, guys. So we are taking over a Toast Life podcast. Cheers. Um, so a little about myself. My name is Cindy, and this is... My name is Aubrey. I'm back on the show. I'm back on from, like, the first season, so it's been a while already. But anyway, we are here to kind of introduce ourselves, talk about ourselves. So I actually have two of my other podcasts, a Chuck Me Daddy podcast, and then... Um, yeah, I said it. So that's my new upcoming, which will launch tomorrow. So I'm excited. And Aubrey here. And then I also have my own podcast. Um, and that is Against All Odds. And so my podcast is actually about a lot about mental health. That's kind of what I circle around is mental health. So that's one of the topics we're going to be covering today. So I'll let you start off since your podcast is more about mental health. Like, um, Talk about so, it. Like, what are what are some things you are experiencing right now? Like, like what are some things you're allow me to reintroduce on? myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, actually, my last episode was about seasonal depression, which I think, like, after you know, we have like the daylight savings. Like, a lot of people just get into that. You get into that mood, and I know for me, especially like lately, the past two weeks, I've been going to sleep at like seven, eight. Like, I've been in bed, and I'm just like, you know what? This is my time to really just take a step back. I think a lot of us are stressed out around this time because one, we're trying to make that money to get, you know, all our loved ones gifts. And then um, holidays are, for some people are, you know, all good and gravy. And then for others, like we kind of, we're missing people, you know, like we have people that are no longer here or we have traditions that they had to stop because certain people came, you know, left our lives. And um, so that was like for me, like as a child, like my dad was always doing like huge Christmases, huge Thanksgivings. And then as my parents divorced, then we kind of stopped that tradition. But my mom was able to like kind of keep that tradition going. But it's not the same when you don't have like, you know, your family. So I feel like seasonal depression is something that hits us all differently. And so this season, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to deal with this a different way. Because a year ago, I was like, way underweight like almost I was weighing like 115 so I was like not eating super depressed so this season I'm like no like we're gonna do something different and we're gonna you know battle this a different way so what do you feel like I, I'm actually curious like what do you feel like has been some of the things that you've dealt like you've done to be able to um you know work with that like seasonal depression like what what are some things that you've it's it's cliche as hell but just like really tapping into your inner self and the things that make you happy I think a lot of times we overthink it and it's like I know for me like roller skating is like one of the things that makes me the happiest and I always make excuses for why I can't go or why I can't like take the time to go and roller skate so it's like just really we I think when people think self-care they think it's like a crazy thing like self-care can mean anything like it can literally be the simplest things ever so I think for me it's really just like taking care of me you know filling my own cup first and which we'll get into this topic later but like not like not dating right now that's not my thing like right now I'm really just like about like all about me all my time is me 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 and like I'm not making time for anybody else and I'm just like really really valuing my time so I want your input on that (laughs) definitely I feel the same way um at the moment, like, I actually recently stopped dating. I realized, like, I I take what are called, like, I call them my isolation weeks. And in that period of time, what I do is, like, I usually go to the gym early in the morning where I don't see any friends, I don't see anyone. And I take that time to really focus on analyzing my life all over again and seeing, like, okay, well, without having any voices and opinions from anyone else, like, what is really going on in my life and what do I need to fix? What are things that I need to work on? And I realized like dating was taking a lot of my time. And although, you know, eventually I do and I, I want to find someone, a partner in my life, but right now it's not the time. Like I realized like right now it's time to really put my priorities in order and really focus on me and the things I need to do in order to get to the next level where I want to be. But 
same thing. I do more of like the journaling. So I like to I'm write. I'm trying to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to write and it's crazy as it sounds like I like to write letters to money. Um, I like to write to letters to things that I need to improve on. And the way I write letters to like, it was weird because I had someone ask me like, what do you mean write letter to a letter to money? And it's like, I've always had trouble with growing up in a low income home is being able to really understand like that money comes and goes and it flows like a river like it comes and it goes to back a out. certain extent though because sometimes I'm like I'll get paid next week it's like no girl <laughs> don't waste the money <laughs> yeah and we need to understand that like in business like in order to make money you have to spend money yeah That's, like, it's an investment thing. um and you're not always going to be like 100% have like that revenue but you have to understand that it's going to flow back and you need to learn how to like invest it and reinvest what you make because a lot of the things you don't see a lot of people don't talk about is like in business it's like you get a lot of that depression like not even just seasonal depression but it's like daily depression where you're you know one day you're making money and the next day you're not and that's like the biggest thing that gets to you and that's where I had to teach myself like all right well I'm gonna write a letter to money explaining the reasons why I had trouble in the past like um allowing money into my life because we stop it by our vibrations mm-hmm. in life and what we give out and 100%. we're not accepting the abundance and mm-hmm. the blessings that are coming in so yeah I feel that well I definitely what you said about like growing up in poverty basically is like I remember I I take my nephews out to like get McDonald's you know like it's easy for me to just like hey you guys want ice cream let's go get ice cream and I look back and it makes me so happy to be able to do that because I look back and it's like my mom would never stop for McDonald's, you know, like we didn't have that. It's a luxury that we have. And I don't think we take a step back to realize that like you, we have the money, but we're over here spending it on things that like we shouldn't be. So it's like, you have to take a step back and think like, am I broke or am I just being stupid with my money? You know? And it's like, I'm so guilty. I was just talking about that (laughs) earlier. Like I spend so much money on Starbucks and like, um, so it's really about like, you just taking a step back, analyzing where is my money going? What am I doing with my money? Um, But. Yeah, no, like I 100% agree with it. Um, A lot of times, like, I kind of took a step back and I was like, why am I not happy? Like, why am I going through a lot of this stuff, like financial stuff? But it's honestly, a lot of it is in your mind, like whatever you think um, and whatever you're thinking of daily is going to manifest into your life. So obviously, if you're thinking negative about money or just any situation, like the way you view dating, the way you view everything in life, like it comes back to you. And I realized like the crazy part, and I think I told Dusko this, is the moment um, in, in November I was struggling a lot with money. The moment I started writing letters to money and the moment I realized like, started kind of writing like what I wanted out of life and what I wanted that week and what I wanted that month and how I wanted it to end, it reflected a lot. That week, I made, I wrote down a goal of how much I wanted to make that month. I surpassed that goal. Oh yeah. I surpassed that goal without even thinking, without, it just like flowed because I allowed it to, through my journaling, allowed it to come back to me. And that was like one of the biggest things I learned is like where are you kind of, I don't know, like where you place yourself, what type of vibrations you give out into the world, it's going to make a huge difference. And I was, that's, I was literally having that conversation with this girl. I was like, dude, I don't have any money at all. Like right now I'm just, and it's not about being, because I think a lot of people, um, and we do it to ourselves where we say like we're broke. It's like, we're not broke. We just, we're taking care of other things, you know? So it's like, I have bills that I have to pay. I have things that I have to do. And it's like, it goes back to like growing up in poverty. Like I don't have anybody to fall back on, you know? Like, and when I see people who do have, you know, their parents or anybody to fall back on, like, no, it's just me, you know, so it's like, I told you to go this week, I was like, I'm legit, like, broke, but it's like, that's, we're telling ourselves that, so that's where, like, journaling comes into a big place, like, you just writing down, and it sounds so cliche, and I feel stupid when I do it, but it's something that I want to get into, is, like, just journaling, writing down, like, what I want, so that it actually, you know, it happens, and it takes place, um, I've been trying to journal and I can't (laughs) do it honestly like the way I I grew up thinking like growing up in a household where low income was like 
you know, super relevant. And like, it, I saw it every day when my parents were like, no, we can't afford that. It's like, why don't we change that language and say, well, what can I do to afford it? Like, I'm going to afford it. So what can I do to, what can I change to afford mm-hmm. that? Because I want to afford that. Um, and we never realized like we're in charge of our life. We can change, we can do everything um, to be able to have that. Like you can have anything you want. And on the way on here, I was actually thinking about that. Like I was listening to um, a song and it was one of the songs that I think Cisco had actually told me about, about like, mom, I made it. And I was like, no, how do I define myself when I made it? I will know when I made it, when I'm able to retire my parents. Mm -hmm. Like that's when I know I made it. And that's okay. And going back to like the topic of dating, that's kind of where I'm at right now, where I'm like, I, I owe it to myself to reach my full potential. And as much as like money is not everything to me and I like money does not equal happiness, but to me it's just like, it's not about me making enough money. It's about making enough money for my mom. And making enough money for, like, my sister, you know? Because they've struggled so much. So it's, like, I get sad of the thought that, like, my mom, unfortunately, is unable to say that she has anything to her name, you know? So that goes back to, like, when I think about dating, that's where I'm at right now. We're, like, I don't want to date. I just want to find myself, find my full potential to be able to give back to my mom who did so much for me. And, you know, it just goes back um, just really finding who I am and I feel like I'm finally doing that so it's like there's so much that we're capable of but unless you find that person's gonna push you to do the same or do it with you like I'm not at a place where as beautiful as it sounds to grow with somebody and to be able to say like you know we both came from the bottom and like now we're you know now we're here we're making it it's like I kind of want to find someone who's like already there or we're both on the same goal you know like I'm not for dating someone who doesn't have goals and aspirations yeah so and now it, that you've touched you know. that topic <laughs> um since you're not dating um so what like what if you do find someone that you know is in that spectrum like what if like you do come across someone that you I don't feel? I don't see myself find like doing that anytime soon only because I don't put myself out there like I feel like I just kind of do me and you know I did come across somebody just recently and we kind like I thought I was ready (laughs) and then I'm like you know what like I go I just go back to thinking like I have I'm so young (laughs) I have so much like I don't even know what my future looks like right now and having somebody jeopardize that (laughs) you know or like taking that risk is just something I'm not ready for um but if I did I mean if I did come across somebody I don't want to (laughs) I definitely hope that I have not like come across that my you know my person or that it happens anytime soon (laughs) okay because I feel like even if my person did come across me like I would probably say no (laughs) just because I'm I'm so like it's like tunnel vision for me right now like I I'm seeing myself at the end of the tunnel I just want to get to that like what if this person can help you get there uh I don't don't know. know there's like to me it's like always like a thing like If this person has something to bring to the table, I feel like not everyone is meant to be like a long-term thing. And some people are placed in your life for a reason to help you get to the next level. And sometimes that's okay. And that's how I view things in life. Like people are come and go. Same thing as friendships. Like people come and go. Sometimes people are put into your life for a reason Mm -hmm. to help you get to that level. And sometimes it just doesn't work out after that. So you move on. And I think, well, this, this person I was talking to said that too. He's like, you know, you're happy when you're with me and like, you know, we have a good time and it's like, but that's the issue right there. Like that's the exact issue is I don't want to find happiness in anybody else. I want to be happy within myself and I don't want anybody. I want the person that I meet to not have to fill in a void. You know what I mean? I want to be a whole person And so that I can give that whole person to somebody else. Like, I feel like a lot of my past relationships happened because I was lacking something in my life. You know, I was lacking, um, I was insecure or I was unhappy. So I was looking for that in somebody. So when they failed me, that's where it ended, you know. So I strongly believe that this person that came into my life, like, might have been my person. But I just, right now, I just not, it's not something that. It always comes back. If it's real, it I'm an overthinker. Back, yeah. I'm an over- <clears throat> overthinker. But right now, I'm just like whether that person was my person or not. You know, like you said, you know, whatever's meant to be will be. But right now, I'm just I'm on my own grind. I feel that. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm on my own grind, and I I'm not 
gonna have somebody jeopardize that i'm not ready to take that risk i feel that 100 we're, so, we're so young <laughs> you too like i'm not getting you yeah. but we're so young and it's like we have so much to do no and you know going back on like the seasonal depression like i've had actually like to tie those back like i've actually had in the past like this past week like just seeing social media and seeing people like have me with their partner and like sometimes it gets to you and you're just like dang like i really want that like i i would want someone there to support me and to be there with me but then at the same time it's like will they really or is social media just really like a front that a lot of people are putting up. and I feel like another thing that I'm not ready for is like I know all relationships have like their ups and downs I'm not ready for the downs <laughs> you know like I'm not ready to like uh I'm not ready for all that like I just want to be happy like that's it so it's like and that's where I kind of feel like what happened with my like the person I was talking to like we were happy 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 and then like we had a down and it's like I'm out you know like I'm so <laughs> quick right yeah <laughs> I'm so quick Girl. right now <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just, that's where I'm at right now is like, I'm so like intact with like finally reaching my full potential Mm -hmm. that it's like anything that does not fulfill my purpose or does not match my needs. You've got to go. Yeah. Like, and you said you reach your full potential. What is, what do you mean by your full potential? I I may, I may not even reach that full potential ever, you know, like, because who knows? I mean, your full potential can be, it's like, it's endless like you can always there's always room for growth like even like the people that we look up to like they have room for growth but really I think my full potential is being I mean you guys I was freaking out before this podcast like (laughs) you know like my it's just like loving myself (laughs) you know and that's like realness like it's just loving myself and I talked to Dusko about like just putting out reels and just doing it I try to do that so often and it's like I look at the camera and I'm like like what if only you knew so many of <laughs> like, us I am so insecure and like I'm not afraid to say that I'm so so insecure so it's like just I think right now that's my main focus is just Focus-minded. like just loving myself for mm-hmm. like who I am and like I know I'm a dope person you know like I, I know like, that I know my heart is huge and I know I know that but it's like social media social media and insecurities kill you know like we just we're looking up to this person like you said looking at relationships and we want that like picture perfect and in reality, like, that's not what There's they no are. There's no such thing as picture <laughs> Yeah, so I think, I think <laughs> like, that's really, like, it. my full potential, whether, um, I don't mean financially or, like, in life, I think my full potential that I'm working towards right now is just self-love. And even you said we talked about it, <laughs> having a guy pay for oh, a date. Oh, my you God. You know, like, yes. that's one huge thing where I'm always the one to, like, pay all the time. Like, you know, like, and that for me is, like, no like I know what I'm worth and like my time is money because I could be and I'm not even ashamed to say but like this past month like yeah I have I mean last night I just stayed up late which I shouldn't have for somebody you know and it's like our time is money our time is valuable because we could be making money instead of hanging out with these people who aren't willing to pay the check exactly I used to think like that where I was like oh maybe I'll offer on the first date like fuck no I'm a princess like I love being spoiled if <laughs> a you're queen. not if you can't a queen. spoil me I'm a queen I'm a fucking queen <laughs> so I can make my own bag I don't care that's fine but if you can't like contribute then like and like I have things to do like I could be making money versus going out with you like what are you gonna do for me Think and about I it. saw some I some girl had she had posted like what's wrong with us being materialistic I am not one to be materialistic. I don't own anything designer. Like, that's not me. But because I come from a place where we had nothing, I expect to be treated like a queen, you know? Like, and, but that circles back to you knowing your worth and yeah. self love and working on like exactly who you are because I feel like I kind of settle and it's like, I'm done with that. I'm done settling. And yeah. it's like, I think a lot of times um, we settle because we think that's, you know, that's, we, we just want to be loved. <laughs> I think it all comes down which, to, we just want yeah, to experience and I, and, love. Yeah. And that's why I say like, I'm not materialistic, but I also know that I can give myself everything. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I want a bag, I can buy a bag. If I want to take myself out to an expensive dinner, I can do that. Yeah. So it's like, I want to find somebody that can do that for me as well. And it's like, we, we have to be clicking somewhere. And then that's where it starts. I mean, of course, like, you know, you meet somebody and like you click, the vibe is dope and everything. I'm just not in a place where I want to take risk about me having to pay for things mm-hmm. and about me having to like go broke over somebody who's like not matching my energy, you know, and that all circles back to just knowing my worth. And that's where I mean, like, 
I'm just tunnel vision, you know, like I want to really, really tap into myself before I even give anybody the time of day. Yeah. To Usually when I like, when it comes to like dating, like to me, it's like, well, in my head, I'm, I'm when I like, I can't, I kind of have like questions I ask, like, you know, like, what are your goals? Like, what are some things that you like doing outside of like the gym and work? Cause then you kind of get to know that person. Obviously if you're just going out to party, like, like, what are you going to bring me? Like, what, I'll, I'll, other than, like, like you being a man and, like, sharing, like, some type of love, like, what do you have to bring me? <laughs> like, there's really nothing that I can give myself. Like, I can go, I can take myself on a date. I can take myself and you on a fucking date. Like, do you really think, like, I'm going to waste my time with you? Like, I can take my friend on a date. Like, it doesn't matter, like, to me. And I've had this conversation with a friend where it's, like, Look, I ha- I don't care about money. Like, I can take myself. I can take you on a date. But, like, if you're, like, because I've seen it a lot on social media where guys are just, like, no, she's just a gold digger. She's just that. And I'm, like, no, I'm just trying to to prove, like, to figure out if you can actually provide for me. Because, like, let's say one day I can't provide for myself. Like, are you going to really be there mm-hmm. for me? And like, I think people view that so negatively. Like, they're so quick to tell us, like, you know, you don't see a person for who they are. And it's, like, no, I do. And that's the reason we began you know to even date to even talk because obviously I saw something in you we vibed we clicked but then it's like when you're when it comes to like and this is like more serious but like when it comes to marriage it's like can I fall back on you because you have to see this person as a life partner you know and it's like if not then they're not your person you need to be able to fall back on someone and that's something I look for a lot because I don't have anybody to fall back on you know it's always been me I pick myself up financially mentally you know physically like oh it's always me so it's like I need somebody who's gonna be able to to bring me back if not then I know I got myself you know like I'm happy with myself so I'm not gonna jeopardize that and that's where I'm at right now you know like there's no way I'm gonna jeopardize my happiness or like even take a risk that's just not for me right now (laughs) I'm only to take a risk, but if you fail me once, like, you're fucking gone. Like, I'm not dealing with you. Yeah. Like, to me, it's, like, if you, like, if in any way I right away feel like you're either taking advantage of me, taking advantage of my emotions, my time, like, I'm cutting you off because for me, like, my time is money. Like, I make money from my time, and in order for me to give you my time, like, you have to be somewhat worth it. Like, you have to share I don't know, the same values that I do. And for me, values, it can be many things like success. It's like like watering each other, I think. Like we help each other out. You help me, I help you. Like it goes back and forth. Um, And lately, in the dating pool, like I haven't seen any of that. Like it's just been, I don't know, like not failure, but it's like, to me, it's like, I love failure, but if I keep constantly seeing it, I'm just like, okay, well then it's a sign from the universe that I have to work on myself a little more and just focus on myself mm-hmm. instead of focusing on things that are not even. And I think right I've I come across that person where like, I really had to think about like, I'm like, damn, like he is good for my soul. Like I feel this, I feel this vibe. I feel this connection, but it's like, it, it, so- it sounds mean or selfish, but it's like, yes, we vibe. And that's dope, but some people are really just meant to be your friends. Exactly. Or your business <laughs> or your business, business partners. partners yeah. yeah, and that's what we can jump into that topic. But I just feel like some people are there to just help you spiritually because I mm-hmm. do feel like I do have like that kind of connection with somebody. It's like, yeah, you make me happy. And yes, I can see us growing, but maybe not in a relationship. And maybe we do reach that point in the future but we both have things that we need to work on. Yeah. You know? And then it's like, so that's where like, sometimes you meet people and they just do become your business partners. So what do you think? I guess we can dive into that topic is like women in business, (laughs) Uh, you know, like make, being able to meet with somebody and it not being something intimate or it not having to be something serious, you know, like just having that business partner where you can talk about dreams and aspirations because what you can do with one guy, you can't do with another. And that's where it's like, I want to find a person who I can talk about goals. I don't, I'm not afraid to talk about like big dreams. If I say like, I want to do a seminar next month, I want to hear like, hell yeah, let's do it. Rather than like, do you think you're ready for that? You know, like, so that's where I feel like you have to really distinguish people. Sometimes you come across somebody and they're solely just there to be your friend Mm -hmm. and to be a business partner and mixing business with pleasure does not work (laughs) definitely not like business like no any okay so for me it's like for the like primarily most of my friends are men I 
take it very serious when I mean, like, anytime I come across, like, any men, like, they already know. Like, I have a persona where, like, they already know I mean business, and that's sad, and we are not passing that line, and I will check you if you pass that line. Mm -hmm. And I learned this in the past when I had my business back when I was, like, years back when I was, like, 21, when I first started. I learned that. That was, like, the number one thing that I was taught by my mentor. It's, like, you're a female. Men, you know, men, you know, sex sells. Like, men are going to obviously try to test you. They're Mm -hmm. going to try to get their way with you. But it's, like... And I learned that from the beginning when one of my um, teammates that works directly with me started to flirt. And I was like, hey, we're business partners. You talk to me like I'm your boss. And we have that relationship. That's it. If you cross the boundary, I'm not working with you. Like, we're done. Just know I'm not helping you anymore. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, like, the way I associate myself around men is the same way. Anytime I come across, like, a business setting like here, it's like, I have no intention of flirting or doing anything like that with you. It's same thing with business. The, yeah. Advice. Same thing with the gym. Like I work out there. I don't want to flirt with yes. anyone in my gym. I want nothing to do. Like yes. I'm not going to talk to anyone like that. Like that's separate for me. I want to come in here and enjoy it. That's your sanctuary. That's I where mean, I for go me, just I'm like, like yeah. I zone out and I've got it so many times. Like you look like a bitch at the gym. That's the whole or point. You look rude at the gym. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry that I come off that way, you know, but like, this is my place to zone out Mm -hmm. from people like you, (laughs) you know, it's like, yeah, the gym is just my place to just like focus. So it's like, I don't want, I'm not here to talk. I'm not mixing anything. No. (laughs) And that's how I always see it. It's like, I treat you as like that. Anything dating is way outside of that. And I very rarely date anyone on my Instagram for like that specific purpose. And I've I've come across that, um, with a specific person who like, we were talking and like we meant business and it slowly leaded into like us being more intimate and then as soon as I was setting boundaries and saying like you know we can't do this anymore that's where the business stopped and so that's when it's like okay so you were just gonna talk business meanwhile I was offering something or meanwhile I was you know you thought it was gonna lead to something and it didn't Mm -hmm. so that's what sucks in the like women in business is that men are always looking for something other than business, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, they think by talking business, they'll be able to get something else. And that's where it sucks because it's like, I've had photographers reach out to me like, Hey, you know, let's, let's record content. Let's do this. Let's do that. And it's like, but do you really want to do business or are you just looking to get in my pants? Yeah. You know? And it's like, that's where like you're, I feel like I, especially, I mean, I'm talking for me, like I'm scared to do business with men because it's like, are you doing it because you believe in me and mm-hmm. are you doing it because you see potential in me or are you just doing it in hopes that I'm going to give something up? Yeah. You know, whether that be like sexually or like even just a date or like, you know, somebody just talked to you, whatever. It's like, it's a scary thing. It's a scary industry to be in and especially fitness because we're out there putting ourselves, you know, we're putting ourselves out there. Um, so it, it really just takes you setting boundaries with this person. Like you've already reached that point yeah. where like you can, <laughs> you can step into a room and be like, Hey, this is my boundary. And this is what it's going to be. Unfortunately, some women don't have that. And it all circles back to knowing your worth. It takes, it takes years. It takes years to be able to get to that level. It obviously took me years. Like that first year, I honestly learned it because most of the business I did do was with men. They had the most money. They had the most money to invest. So in order for me to sell policy was through, obviously, like when you're talking to a married couple, typically it's the man that has the money. So for me, I, the way I learned, I regained my confidence was like, look, they believe anything. Life is like acting. Life is, the way I see it is like life, you just act how people want to, how you want people to treat you. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, it's like dressing a certain way and, you know, being very vocal about how I want to be treated got me to like where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I set the boundaries like right away where I was like, no, I'm here for this. And if you don't want to deal with that, I have someone else that's going to pay for that time. So I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to head out. But how you quit your nine to five and what you're kind of going into now and what you're doing with your life. That's a loaded ass question. <laughs> we love loaded um, questions on the Toast to Life podcast. <laughs> so I actually recently left my nine to five job um, back in July, actually. Not to say that I was not making good money. I was making pretty damn good money. 
the reason why I left was my mental health was suffering a lot. Like it was suffering tremendously. And it wasn't until I remember still the night before vividly where I was very suicidal when I was literally thinking about jumping off like the side of my freaking apartment uh, window. Like it was that bad where I realized like, no, I need to take time off. Um, in the beginning, I thought I was only going to take my two weeks of PTO. And then I realized like, dude, I have throughout the time when I was still working my nine to five, I had all these businesses going on, making me money, obviously not the amount of money I'm making now, but at the time they were generating like money. And the first two weeks that I took off, I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I, I don't think I'm going back. And I kind of just left. I left on disability. I had a whole month off till now. I still don't even know if I'm fired or still with a job, but <laughs> that's like actually the funny thing. You're like, that's, um, that's a stress for another day. <laughs> yeah. That, I'm going to figure that out when the year is up. But basically I, I left completely. Um, I focused a lot of my energy in my other businesses. So I have a photo booth business that I run, um, typically booked on the weekends and that generates some of my income, but I also make income through like investments. I invest in stocks. I do all of that on the side and I do videography work. So that kind of like, it's a little extra income that comes in. Um, my main income is actually, I'm a virtual female dominatrix. Yes. Let's talk about <laughs> <So>. that. <laughs> um, I do that online. I don't meet with any men. So what is that? Because a lot of people probably don't know what that is. So usually what a female dominatrix does is we deal with a lot of kinks and fetishes. So a lot of men have fetishes of humiliation, degradation. So that's like the two main ones. Like men pay money to be humiliated for either having a small penis. They want Do you guys hear that? She makes money off of humiliating <laughs> men. So um, goals. <laughs> so even just to talk to me and have a conversation just through text, like I think I showed Dylan earlier, some guy tipped me 30 bucks to be able to tell him like shit basically about just humiliate him in general just to text him back um but yeah that's pretty much how I do it there's a lot more to it um there's also you have to you have to tune into her podcast for that (laughs) (laughs) yeah they request like bodily fluids that's where spit pee poop use toys come in panties use panties a lot of men pay anywhere from 30 dollars to over 100 dollars for the items um that are shipped to them directly um I do a lot of like webcam and text sessions a lot of these things like what a lot of people don't actually know is that you don't really have to be nude for any of this like there's really no nudity included a lot of these men pay for the experience of having having their fetish like being able to have their fetish fulfilled somebody meet yeah somebody meeting their their yeah they just want that fantasy they want that role play so a lot of times like for a Like a session, like a webcam session, I charge for 150 for the hour. Um, And that's on top of them having to pay a tribute. A tribute fee is $25. And that's just for you to be able to talk to me and discuss the services. That's nothing else included. Um, So it it ranges. There's a lot of women that do, like pro dominatrix, that do, um, you know, work out of their just uh, dungeons out here. There's a girl called, her name is uh, Justine. She works out of the LA area. And then um, there's another big dungeon out in the LAX area. Um, I believe it's called Sanctuary. That, it's a whole different aspect in themselves. But a lot of what I do is more virtual. I don't deal with clients face-to-face ever. Um, But yeah, that's pretty much how I make most of my income too. I would, I mean, like, that's where I'm kind of at right now, where, like, my job, I work at a school, so we're kind of in the middle of us renewing our contract, and whether the school gets, like, renewed, then we, cool, we all keep our jobs, or we don't get renewed, and, like, we're fucked. So I'm kind of in that position where I'm, like, a lot of people are obviously fighting for us being able to stay a school and, like, renew, and I'm kind of just, like, I want to quit my 9 to 5. I want to make my podcast a full-time thing. I want to do seminars. I want to, like, we just talked about it in, you know, the episode me and Dusko um, recorded. Like, one of my goals for next year is to have a seminar done, whether people show up, whether I have 100 people, whether I have 10 people. Like, I just want to do a seminar because that's what I am made for, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm kind of, like, a lot of people in, like, at my job are, like, hoping we get renewed. And I'm, like, cool. That's all, I mean, that sounds good because it's, like, you have 
what is it like security, right? Like financial security yeah. where you're like, you don't have to stress. You have a job. And I'm kind of just like at that point where I'm like, if we don't get renewed, cool. Then I'm kind of forced to just go full force with my podcast, you know, and to go full force with what I actually do want to do rather than having to wake up. And I don't hate my job. Like, I don't want to say I hate my job because I'm because I'm still servicing kids and I'm still doing kind of what I loved to do. But I also know that, like, I can only serve as kids to a certain extent, you know, mm-hmm. like they're they're kids. And like, I want to make that impact. But I also want to talk to people my age, do seminars like for people my age, you know, so it's yeah. like to and- see you <laughs> and to see that like you've already, like you've quit your nine to five. And unfortunately, like it was because you were suicidal and like you wanted, to, you know, you just wanted you were done with it. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's not where I'm at right now. But like to be able to, you know, you're here today and like you're able to say you have you're you're, financially you're good you know and like and you don't work a nine to five yeah so I think that's super dope it's it was a it's it's not all you know like rainbows and butterflies like it really is not um I left my nine to five to work 24 seven basically (laughs) but now like I'm working 24 seven and things I love like that's what I'm saying if it fills you so excited waking up every morning and I wake up literally at 6 30 in the morning every day I don't have, before this, I had to be up by 7 a.m. to start my 8 a.m. job and I was struggling to get up. Like now. You weren't waking up with purpose. Yeah. And now I'm waking up every morning, 6.30 a.m. Whether I'm making money that day or not, like I have to put up a face. And there's going to be days, like there's days where I literally cry for an entire day because I'm not making any money. But then guess what? The next day I'm going to make more and make up for the day before that. Mm -hmm. Um, Luckily, a lot of things have been a blessing this week like I was trying to go like dude this weekend this upcoming weekend my photo booth got booked for the entire day which is an insane they both picked like the most highest package like that to me was like oh my god oh, like yeah. I love like being able to do this because I bring so much joy to other people and as much as people want to talk shit about like OnlyFans or talk that because that's my main platform of where I do most of my services like honestly I'm doing what I love like as crazy as it sounds, like, I enjoyed being a female dominatrix. Why? Because I'm able to regain my confidence. I'm able to set boundaries. I'm able to run it like a, like a real business. Like, I'm still working right now on, um, getting all my paperwork for the LLC to be able to, you know, make that money through there. But that's also funding other businesses. Like, I'm not just taking home a paycheck. I'm funding everything else that I'm doing. And that, to me, it brings me so much joy because it's, like, one step further, to becoming financially free but also being able to provide for my own family so I don't know it's it's a whole different feeling in itself being able to wake up every morning and be like I'm exhausted but you know what like I'm just excited to get on with the day and you get to control kind of like how much you make right because Mm -hmm. it's like and with anything like people say they want to do something but it's not until they actually take action and like actually get it done you know it's like where you like you may one day be broke but it's like it's probably an outcome or a result of what you didn't do right like you wake up one day and it's like do I want to put in the work today or do I not like you are in control of your finances now and that's really (laughs) dope to say like to be able to do that yeah you can yeah you can (laughs) um honestly like to me, I, I've worked in sales my entire, you know, my entire life in sales, basically like seven years in sales. And when my first business, when I was like 21 years old, it felt, I quit my job. I quit everything. I did the same thing I did this time around. It felt, I went 20 grand in debt. And the first thing I said, it was not, I'm too scared to start a business. I was like, all right, so now we got to get a job, pay off that debt and start all over. And mm-hmm. let's just keep it rolling. And it's like, it's not how, it's not, you know, how hard you fell or all this other stuff. It's like, how many times can you fail and get the fuck back up? Mm -hmm. Like, can I do this over and over again? Like you, you have to be like very resilient to this and a person to your word. Like you have to have very high integrity where you're like, Hey, if I promised you, I'm going to be there. Even if I go out, even if I have this to do, I'm going to show up. up. Like Mm -hmm. that's the number one thing. And people want to see that. Like people you do business with, even if it's your own friends, like show up. Like that's the first thing you have. Like that's the number one thing to start. And I've learned in so many businesses, but it's like showing up, um, Give me within, yourself goals. Like with intention though, right? Like, like you said, this is something that you do want to do. Like what you're doing right now is something that fulfills you and like you want to do. And I talked about it in our last episode. Like I got my certification. I attempted to become a personal trainer, but I couldn't show up. 
you know, I couldn't show up for other people because I wasn't showing up for myself first, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you have to find something where you can continue to show up regardless of any obstacles that come, you know, that come your way. And that goes back to like, are you doing what you were? I mean, we don't know exactly what we were made for, you know, but I just felt like personal training, I might go back to it. But as of like right now and as of like last year when I attempted it, it just wasn't my thing, you know, like, and now like I'm doing my podcast and like, that is something that like I look forward to. And it's something that. I do think it fulfills me and not only does it fulfill me, but it's also helping other people. Yeah. You know? And it, even if you don't do it now, it can potentially be in the future. Mm-hmm. Cause that's the same thing that's happened to me with videography. I stumbled upon videography when I was 12 years old. I taught myself, it was a really weird scenario. I've worked in the industry before. So I worked for like the voice, Jimmy Kimmel, like I've worked in that whole industry mm-hmm. And how I got there was because I was really broke and I just wanted a job and I wanted to make money. And that was the funny thing. Like I ended up there because I just wanted a job and I believe so much in myself that I had so much to bring that they hired me on the spot to do it. And sometimes that's all the motivation we need. Sometimes all the motivation you need is simply being in the darkest place. And like you're your proof of that, you know, like you were in a dark place with your nine to five. You were suicidal, like you weren't happy But what did you do? Like you sprouted through that. And sometimes that's what it takes is being broke as hell. Like people Mm -hmm. always like to say, like, I came from the bottom. Like, but did you really? Yeah. You know, or is that just like a story that you use? Because everybody like you think you're more valuable when you say that you came from the gutter, you know, but it's like then there's people like us where like we really had to reach that low, low point and like still persevere, you know, and sometimes that's all you need. People say like, what keeps you motivated? Like, bro, I wasn't, I wasn't motivated. I didn't want to do this shit. Yeah. I was forced because I had no other option. Yeah. Like I was broke. And I mean, so I had to find a way, you know, I still remember till this day. I remember after my business failed, I wanted to, to succeed so bad because I wanted my haters to believe I lost every single person I thought was my friend. I had no one. Preach. And I remember stopping by the gas station, looking at my bank account, I only had 20 bucks and I was like, well, I have a car payment. I have this to do. I can't even buy food. Like I had so much, like I could have just given up and been like, F this, I'm never going to do this again. But no, here I am now quitting my job again, doing it over again. Why? Because that's the process of a business. Like you're going to succeed and you're going to fail. It's a process and you're going to have to get used to being able to just trust yourself and give yourself that like your own motivation no one else is going to be there for you but you and that's where you have to look back on those those times where I kind of I mean I talked about it in my last podcast too where like look around you and see like are those people somebody that because like you said you were sitting at that gas station with 20 bucks did you have anybody in that contact list of like I have 300 people in my contacts (laughs) like you can literally open my phone (laughs) not a single one including my parents would have got me out of that That $20 in my bank account. So that's where you have to look around you. And I'm so grateful to be able to sit here today and say, like, I do believe that the people around me right now, like in this setting, would pick me back up. Yeah. You know, and it's like, if you, like, I know I can do it myself because I've been doing it for years. I can pick myself up, you know, out of that place. But if the people around you aren't motivating you and aren't pushing you and aren't there to help you succeed... You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. Luckily at the time I did have people, I stayed over a friend's house because I wasn't living at home at the time. So I was staying over a friend's house. Her parents had food. So I stayed there and I ate. And the first thing I was doing, I was like, okay, well, first step, figure out what I'm going to do with this debt. Like I can't keep carrying this on. If we're going to move a step further, we got to figure out what we're going to do. So I obviously had to hire, I was sued through that business. I had to hire, um, hire lawyers, do all that stuff. Um, on top of it, I actually got a full-time job in sales because I knew I can control my income through commission. That was my first instinct. I was like, I can control my income if I want to make this much money. And commission is also like, that's another, like being motivated to want to make more money because people do commission jobs and it's like, they don't make any of that commission because they're not motivated. You have to set yourself goals. Like other than having people breathe down your freaking like, um, like Your just neck, breathing just... down over you, like telling you, you got to do this, you got to do that. Like you have to be self-motivated to hit your numbers, to do all that stuff, not for the company, but for yourself. Cause you're making money for yourself. But while I was doing that, I went back to school full time. Um, and I also started another side business while I was doing she just, it. Because she just does I was it like, <laughs> she does it, it like, all. we're going to do this. <laughs> and this was a friend that left the business and we started a business together. 
But I had to, and at the same time, I remember I wanted to help nonprofit small businesses with videography work because I had that skill already, but I couldn't. Like, it was too much on my plate, and I couldn't do that. Fast forward five years later, here, I'm here doing that. Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here actually being able to help people with small businesses, um, pretty much anyone. And that's what I think, I like, that's the offer. first thing you told me, like, the first time we met, you're like, okay, and we still need to get together. <laughs> but it's like the first time I met, you're like, how can I help you? And like that right there is like, okay, this is a person I need to keep around my circle, you know? And it's like, you need to be around people that... Mm-hmm you're like they're gonna motivate you I'm, I'm gonna motivate you you're gonna motivate me you know like we're gonna have each other and that's the first thing you told me you're like this is what I do how can I help you, you know yeah. like how can I be a service to you like that's freaking amazing like you know you said you came from a really dark place and now you're here like yeah. you're doing like, what fulfills you you're fulfilling other people's like you're you're winning in all aspects you know and that was my number one thing when I left the business I was like I want to dedicate and I, I told this girl once, I was like, I knew I was put on this, on this earth to serve, to give what I have to offer to other people. And it was, and my way of serving is being able to help with whatever necessities I have to help you get to the next level. I may not be, I may not at the moment get compensated, but I will eventually. Mm-hmm. It's just not right now. Yeah. The amount of it, he's always watching. And yeah. like, that's a huge thing. It's like, you have to do things and expect nothing in return. Yeah. You know, and I feel like this whole room of people, like we all were here to really make an impact on people and like just help wherever we can. And like that just, that fulfills my heart right there is like just being around people that are here for like the sole purpose of just like, I'm going to do what I love to do. And I hope to help others with that same thing, you know, and like eventually we're going to get repaid. Like, you know, like in one way or another, it may not be financially, but like you're going to come across people that are just like you or you're going to be repaid in a greater way, you know. And it's very true. I've actually experienced it, too, because the last time um, I remember it was Jackie was on the podcast and that's how we met in person. Amazing. person. And she reached out and she was posting up like I'm looking for female videographers and then through her, she recommended me to this other girl. And now I'm super close to this other girl. We're going on vacation together. We're going to Hawaii together. And it's, like, built a whole freaking, like, it's network, not only her, but, like, other people, other references. It's built my um, photo booth to expand a lot more with audiences. But it's, like, it's like I have to, you have to be able to give to other people and not expect anything in return to be able to get to the next level. And that's the number one thing about being an entrepreneur. You have to be open to giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm glad we had, we have these conversations and we have, you know, a Toast and Life podcast to be able to give us the opportunity to have these conversations. Um, So both of our podcasts, this is so crazy. (laughs) We're on a podcast and we both have our own podcast. We both have our podcast. Um, So mine is Against All Odds. Um, You can find that on Apple, Spotify, Everywhere, literally anywhere. I'm so proud to be able to say that. Well, you know my unapologetic, unapologetic self. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what people think. So I t- we talk about like our mission and our podcast is to talk about topics that people have trouble talking about because they're considered taboo or women shouldn't talk about that or we shouldn't talk about that. So our name of the podcast is Choking Daddy Podcast. So that's our number one. Mine that it's going to launch Monday. Um, it's called Yeah, I Said It. Similar but I want more of a, it's more of a business outlook topic, but I also cover mental health. I cover all the aspects. So that is my podcast. It's, they're both going to, be, oh, they're both on Spotify, Apple Music, and pretty much every other um, platform you can think of. So, so go tune in, tune into Toast of Light podcast, continue to support. And then of course, support all of us. <laughs> <laughs>